Well, good morning. This is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred. Really glad you could join me today out here in the vegetable garden. Well, today I thought I would take you through a late summer garden tour. So thanks for joining me today out here in the vegetable garden. Well, it certainly has been an interesting summer here in Pennsylvania Zone 6. We've had a lot of heavy rainstorms. I call them gully washers. I haven't really had to water the garden a whole lot this year. It's been really good for my pond because it keeps the pond full and filled with nice fresh rainwater. Because I use my pond to water my garden. I use it to, to run or operate my, my outdoor garden shower over there at my garden structure. But it's been a good season so far. I, the tomatoes are flourishing, the eggplant are flourishing and thriving, the, green, the King Arthur green bell peppers are really growing out there in the garden. We've picked a lot of curly leaf kale so far this year, a lot of uh, Ford Hook Giant Swiss chard. I have some Malabar spinach out there growing and some cantaloupe. The cantaloupe has, have been delicious. I have some uh, yam, sweet potatoes growing out there in the garden. It's going to be one of those hot, humid days here in Pennsylvania. I can feel the humidity already on my skin. So why don't we start our tour right here alongside my garden trellis here. So right here on the left side I had these morning glory vines growing up this arbor. My wife and I bought a pack of seeds a couple years ago hoping that these would really grow and take off. Well, we were really surprised because these morning glory vines will, will take over. You know, the, the following season when I took the this took the uh, vine off the trellis here, I had seeds scattered all over. And so the, the, in the springtime, I had a carpet of these, of these morning glory vines growing everywhere. So I would caution you to beware of growing morning glory glories in your garden because the seeds will spread everywhere and you'll have morning glories growing up. So we have them growing up on this side. And then on this side, I have some clematis vine growing up here. It just adds a little bit of grace and color to the uh, entranceway here into my garden. Also at my feet, you can see these beautiful wave petunias. I have some on this side and then some on this side over here. We also have the canna lilies that I have scattered throughout the garden. They add a, a beautiful grace and color and fullness to the garden. It gives the garden a tropical look. So why don't you follow me over to my 18 foot by 30 foot garden and we'll take a look at those eggplant and peppers over there. So here on the left side I have six of my classic eggplant growing. I have five basil plants growing. And then I have here 20 of my King Arthur green bell peppers growing. I just did a video where I harvested 50 pounds of my green bell peppers. I also did a video harvesting 26 pounds of my classic eggplant. And then over here I have some tomatoes. I have, I have my mountain spring tomatoes and some uh, plum crimson tomatoes over here. Now I have four rows of six, so I have 24 total tomato plants in this area. But the uh, mountain spring sandwich, uh, mountain spring tomatoes are great for tomato sandwiches, and the plum crimson are great for making tomato sauce. My wife and I just did harvest some tomatoes out of here, and we canned 20 of our tomato sauce for the winter. We add our our peppers and our Malabar spinach, some jalapeno peppers. And uh, I hope to can maybe like 75 quarts this year. So why don't we take a closer look at some of these tomatoes. I'm going to be doing another harvest of these maybe in a couple days because this second bunch are really becoming ripe. I 
also use my heavy duty tomato cages for my tomatoes. I just love these things. They're, they're quick, they're easy. You set them in, you forget them. You might pay anywhere from five to six dollars a, a cage, but you know, they're gonna last you 20 years or more. And over here is my green bell peppers. And so let's take a closer look at these beautiful peppers. And then over here around the corner is where I have my plastic eggplant growing. And so these have just been growing and thriving. I've been able to use a lot of these in our own kitchen and also share a lot with my friends and family. Why don't we go take a look over there at my garden structure. We'll take a look at that Malabar spinach over there. I also have my elephant ears that I plant here every season and they just offer such a beautiful tropical look in the garden. They're nice and full. They add a nice burst of color. I just dig these up after the first heavy frost and store them down in my basement in a plastic container. But something I would encourage you to think about growing in your garden, but they just add such beauty to your garden. So over here around the corner is where my Malabar spinach is. So I bought a pack of this Malabar spinach. It's also known as climbing spinach from an Ace Hardware store nearby. And I have it growing up a two foot by eight foot trellis with chicken wire in the middle. But you know, as gardeners, we all know that regular spinach bolts when that sum summer heat comes, but this Malabar spinach just continues to grow right through the summer up until the first frost. And, and so we add this to our salads. We put it in our spaghetti sauce that we can over, for over the winter use. And right alongside it, I have one of my Sun Gold Cherry tomatoes growing. So what I like to do is grab a tomato and I take a leaf from my Malibor spinach. I may make a little wrap out of it. And then it's just, makes a great combination Nothing like going out back and just picking food right from your own backyard grocery store. So why don't we take a little closer look at that Malabar spinach. So one of my favorite parts in my outdoor garden structure is my outdoor shower and I just love that shower it's great after working out in the garden or mowing the lawn where you get all hot and sweaty and so I just jump in this outdoor shower and it's just a great way to refresh yourself and clean up yourself so let's take a look at that so my outdoor shower is right behind this door here why don't I go turn the switch on and I'll turn the pump on from my pond and Get this shower operating. Another thing I like about this outdoor garden shower is that I have my Sun Gold Cherry tomatoes growing right up inside it so I can take a shower and, and eat these tasty jewels. So why don't we go take a look at some of the tasty and delicious cantaloupe that are growing in the garden. In this back section of my garden area, I have three four foot by 
32 foot raised garden beds and are divided in the four eight foot sections. And I, I fill these with my composted leaf mulch that I amend with topsoil. And I buy that from Barnside Compost. I maybe get anywhere from three to five yards per year. And the reason I have them drop off the compost or I purchase the compost is because my garden can't generate enough compost. And I typically go through here and add anywhere from two to three inches of, of my compost to my raised beds every springtime. And then I, early season, I mix in my alfalfa pellets, gives it some additional nutrients. But over here in front of me is where I have my cantaloupe growing here. I have my sun gold cherry tomatoes growing up this trellis here. And right in front of me here, I have some of my yam sweet potatoes. And I have some metal fencing covering this so the deer don't eat all the leaves. And then on the end here, I have my beautiful garden fountain here. I did a video on how you can build and install that in your garden for $65. But these sun gold cherry tomatoes are one of my favorite tomatoes out in the garden here. And I have this growing up my paddle panel trellis. And I did a video on how you can also build this for around $45. It's a step-by-step -step instruction video. Let's take a closer look at some of these melons. I also have some of my butternut squash here growing in my garden. It's my fa favorite winter time squash. I've grown all kinds of squash, like the Blue Hubbard squash, the acorn squash, but butternut squash is my favorite. I like the size of the butternut squash. It's easy to store, and it's just the right size for making meals. So why don't we take a closer look at some of the melons and my butternut squash, and also my tasty sun gold cherry tomatoes. behind me, this one here on the end is where I grew my Detroit dark red beets. I did a video on, on harvesting 20 pounds of those red beets and we freeze those over the winter. We bring them to boil in a pot and slice them up and then just put them in heavy duty freezer bags. And this is my delicious and tasty curly leaf kale that I direct sowed this in the early spring and I didn't thin out the rows. I just let them do their own thing and I was amazed at the harvest that I got from, from these two eight-foot rows of, of uh, seeds. I'm always amazed uh, if you take a little teeny tiny seed, how it, it just turns into a huge harvest. A little seed is a living embryo, and it's in its dormant stage. And so as gardeners, we plant it in the soil, we water it, we keep it moist, it pops its head out of the soil and then we get the opportunity to nurture and care for that. And one way I nurture and care for a lot of my plants, especially those in the brassica family, is I grow them in my or under my low tunnel hoop houses. These are typically four feet wide and three feet high. And then I cover these with a, a polyester cloth to keep out the that cabbage butterfly, that yellow yellow butterfly you see flying around the garden. Lays eggs under the leaves and then it turns into a worm which really just chews apart and destroys your plants. But I have my curly leaf kale growing under here. I bought some transplants from Ray's Nursery in the early spring here. And so we could take a closer look at this kale. It's beautiful under the row cover here. raised bed over there 
is underneath my wooden arch. Let's go take a look at the vegetables growing in that area. I have to say having raised veg here in my garden has saved a lot of my vegetables from drowning. I mentioned earlier about all those heavy rainstorms we have and you know those raised beds just keep the vegetables elevated above the, the original soil level. It also warms the soil up in the early spring. It makes it a little bit easier on your back. You don't have to bend over quite so far but I would really encourage you to think about having raised beds. Another benefit is you can also control what type of soil you add to them. Well right behind me here is I also have some of my Amish paste tomatoes growing and then I have another one of my or two of my sun gold cherry tomatoes growing. I have I bought a total of seven sun gold cherry tomato plants from Ray's and I've been starting to freeze them already. I have two bags of them saved. Each bag holds about 200 tomatoes and so my goal this year is to freeze about a thousand of them. I just take the tomatoes and put them in a one gallon heavy duty freezer bag and just store them in my freezer and that way they're going to last me probably till July of, of next year. And again a, a total of about a thousand works out good. I put them in our salads or in our soups, in our in our beans and so they're just even tasty frozen. And you'd be surprised. These Amish paste tomatoes are also good for canning. They have a nice thick meaty flesh. You always want to make sure you provide proper sunlight for whatever vegetables you're growing. Also keep in mind that most of your vegetables that you grow out in your garden you can also grow in, in pots. Just make sure you use a good potting soil and each vegetable gets its proper amount of sunlight. For instance your tomatoes you know they grow best at six to eight hours of sunlight. If you grow them in any less sunlight they're going to be stunted and not produce the amount of harvest that you want. Your leafy greens like your kale and your Swiss chard and collard greens, mustard greens, they can get away with four to six hours of sunlight. So it's really important to remember when you plant your vegetables out in your garden or on your balcony or your deck, go out and see where that sunlight hits your certain areas and, and how long the sunlight. That way you can adjust your plants according to where your sunlight shines in your garden. So let's go take a look at the vegetables behind me in this other raised bed. So here on my end raised bed area that's four foot by 32 foot, I have my, my uh, Ford Hook Giant Swiss chard. It's a great spinach substitute. I use this in my salads all summer long. You can also steam it. It's good that way, but I generally use my Swiss chard and my Malabar spinach and some of my curly leaf kale. I make a big salad. I have that almost every day, but I, I put everything in it but the kitchen sink. I put chickpeas in it, tomatoes from the garden, red beets from the garden. I heat up some one potato and I cut that up and put it in the, in the salad. And I also use balsamic vinegar but it's, it's just so tasty and delicious and it's super healthy for us and it's also very filling. I'm always amazed at how our bodies will heal themselves of most chronic diseases when we, when we give them that opportunity. You know, when we start, stop eating the foods that harm our bodies, like the, the, it's the meats, the dairies, it's the cheeses and the oils. That's the cause of most of your chronic diseases and unfortunately the mainstream medical system don't understand that nutritional fact. But this Swiss chard is one of my favorite leafy greens to grow in the garden. It's pick and come again, so as long as you continue to pick those outer leaves, it'll continue to produce all through the summer. I also have some of my sonic tomatoes growing back here. I have them supported by this rope and twist method that I call it. And then also here on the end, I have another cattle panel trellis growing my tasty and delicious sun gold cherry tomatoes. And then behind me here, I have some more of my mountain spring tomatoes. I have four more growing here. And so that provides plenty of tomatoes for my wife and we share them with friends and family, the tomatoes. And 
Also right in front of me here, I see I have my some more of my sweet potato yams. I ended up buying like 40 slips from Ray's Greenhouse over there in Telford, PA. And they're like 20 cents a slip if you buy a certain quantity. And I ended up buying 40 this year. So I'm looking forward to doing a sweet potato harvest this fall. Well, I hope you enjoyed this garden tour and was able to give you maybe some tips and ideas for your garden. And I just want to thank you for joining me out here today in the garden. If you have any questions or comments about this video, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. And you can also visit us at plantsmartliving.com. And there you can learn more about gardening and also how you can reclaim and restore your health by adopting a whole food, plant-based, vegan lifestyle. It's certainly turning out to be a humid day today. Another thing I wanted to mention to you if you wanted to learn more about nutrition is that on Netflix there's some good documentaries. One of them is called Forks Over Knives, Plant Pure Nation, there's Cowspiracy, another one's called What the Health. Also some doctors that I have researched and studied. You know these are doctors that they just don't treat the symptom, they, they treat the cause and they realize that the cause of most chronic diseases are food-borne illnesses, that it's the food that's the root of the problem. So these plant-based doctors are able to reverse and cure most of your chronic diseases, which is like the world's best kept secret. Some of the doctors I have learned from and have really helped me losing 65 pounds and all my blood pressure and cholesterol just plummeted and my energy restored, but Dr. John McDougall was one of them. Dr. Coldwell Esselstein has a book, How to Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. Yes, heart disease is, you can reverse heart disease. Also, uh, Dr. Michael Greger, nutritionfacts.org, is another great doctor. Dr. Colin Campbell from the China Study. Begin to read and study these doctors and your eyes will be opened that, yes, we can heal our own our bodies will heal themselves if we give them that opportunity. Our vegetable garden is kind of like our backyard medicine cabinet. Hippocrates, Hippocrates himself said, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. He realized that food was a much more powerful medicine to help and heal people than these little tiny pills that these big pharma companies profit from. Well, anyhow, I just want to thank you for joining me out here in the vegetable garden. I hope you have a wonderful day and a bountiful garden season. So until next time, this is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred.